you get on the repeater, and in this case, if I wanted to talk to Bruce, I would just get on there and it's Bruce. I'd say, no one's talking, it's just over. I say, N6 THN, N6 VLF. And he would answer. That's radio to radio. So you guys, you guys know what that is? This radio to radio, we call it simplex. So if somebody's on the air and they say, hey, go to simplex, and they give you, they throw out a number, and they go 147.150, that's a simplex channel, radio to radio. There's no offsets, there's no anything special. You'll probably want to turn off all of your, oh, that would make too much sense. Uh, it would, uh, you don't need your PL, you don't need your decode, you don't need your offset to typically use on simplex. Because when you go to simplex, you're typically out, we're doing an event or something, and it's everybody just, hey, go to that frequency, let's let's hear it. And in your case, I think that would probably be the case, because different people show up and different radios. But if you've got in a situation where, let's say your club got to pretend 10 people, and you're always the same 8 to 10 people, you might get together and program multiple simplex frequencies in your radio, and you might put their encode, decode, receive on there. That way when you're driving around, they won't squelch out. And if some dude on, a, on the mountain over there that you got nothing to do with is with a big radio is talking to you in the And we'll get into, we'll get into that you know, in just a little bit. So this guy right here, these two pictures here, this is the Dixon Water Tower. If anybody didn't know that, it doesn't say Dixon on it. And this is Mount Vaca. Or well, no, no, this is Summit Hill, theoretic ones. So if you look at this picture, you're, these are locations where a repeater is located. Do you all know what a repeater is? So okay. They are. So the repeater is elevated typically, in this case a water tower, in this case on top of a mountain. But for the repeater operation to work, your radio will transmit on one frequency to receive on another. So if you hold your radio in your hand and look and look at it, and in this case, my radio turned off. But if I turn my radio on and I look at it, and it's <coughs> so these examples have to be happen to be in 440. So in the 440 offset happens to be five megahertz. Okay, 5.0 megahertz. So when I'm looking at my radio and I happen to have a bow fan, it's 441.650. That's what I'm going to hear the repeater on, okay? But when I push the button, the display changes to 446.650. It shifts up five. The reason it's doing that is so that your repeater, and you can see that really well on the little guy with the car, it shows the frequencies the one going up to the repeater is five higher than the one coming back. Because the repeater is actually two radios up there. Re one's receiving, one's transmitting at the same time. So they had to be on different frequencies. So in addition to that, to bring the repeater up, our club, our main repeater's on top of Mount Vaca. It's a, a 145.470. <coughs> and do you know what a PL tone is? This is the part that we need to help you out with. To use a repeater in our area, you program the frequency in your radio and the appropriate offset. And in this case, our club repeater has a negative offset. So it's 145.470. Then the offset negative would be 0.600 negative. And some radios do it automatically for you. These guys here, you have to use the menu and tell it to go to 0.6, okay? And then 0.6 negative. We can help you with that. If you hang around after meeting, we will help you with it. And that way, when you push the button, you're looking at 145470. You push the button, it goes to 144870. Okay? It drops down 600. So now the repeater knows that someone's trying to, to call me. But it doesn't come on because you put the PL in here. You notice this one has a PL, 
and they call it CTCSS. And you'll hear your little Chinese radio say that. CTCSS. Secret password. Have you heard that? Have you heard it talk to you? Not yet. Uh, not yet. I haven't even used it yet. <laughs> okay. Well, when you're going through, it'll, it'll in the menu, it'll tell you that. It'll be a bunch of numbers. And the numbers typically start at about 64, and they end up in the, in the low 200s. RPL for our repeater is 127.3. Is that right? Yeah. 127.3. So if you want to bring our repeater up, you would go into your radio and you would say, my receive frequency, your default, which you see on the screen, would be 145.470. Then you'd go in and you'd tell it offset. And the offset on this one, on these, do you guys, which radios do you guys have? Both fans. Both fans. Yeah, both fans. Okay. Yeah. So in there, it's going to say offset, pl offset, plus, offset, minus, offset, off. Okay. So in this case, you would go offset, minus. And then you would, you would have already set the offset, which is the menu before or after that, to 0.6. Okay. So now you've got your offset at 0.6. You make it negative, And then you, you hit the exit. And now it's offset 0.6. And when you push the button, the display will go 0.6 below. A 0.6 is technically 600 kilohertz. You'll hear that term. But when we're talking on the radio, people say, "Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a positive split at 0.6." When well, you're talking about or negative 0.6, when you're talking about two meter radio, the VHF band, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, it's going to be 0.6. Almost all. Of them. <coughs> there are a few exceptions, but we're not going to we're not going to confuse you with that tonight. There, everybody around here, all the Mount Baca stuff, all the Fairfield stuff, all the everybody is VHF 0.6. Okay, UHF, commonly called the 440 band, commonly called the 70 centimeter band, but I, I call it 440. 440 is this part. This part of the uh, California is positive five. 5.0. So when you're looking at your display, VHF, it's going to say 0.6, okay? Megahertz, MHZ. On the UHF side, it's going to say 5.0. See what I'm saying? Because when you just look at it, it'll say 00, 5.0, and that's correct for the UHF boxes, which there's many of them around here. Then you go to the VHF box, which is super commonly used around here, it'll be 000, three zeros, point six zero zero. Okay, and we will help you with that tonight. About after after the really uh, the detailed presentations are where we hang out. So you're welcome to hang out, eat donuts, and we'll, one of us will, will help you. A lot of these guys have these great notes and they're really professional. Yep. <laughs> so Jason is, and, and Nick, and uh, Bob, and they have, they have a lot of people. So we'll be able to help you with that. So, and another really cool thing to help you out is if you, is anybody told you, Jason probably has, if he hasn't, he's a really bad guy. <laughs> uh, the uh, repeater book? Yeah. Your repeater book app? Yeah. This is your friend. So if you get the repeater book app, this thing right now, I can go in here and tell it that I want to look at the two meter and it's actually labeled two meters, you push the menu and you go to settings and literally it literally it gives you the choices 10 meter, 6 meter, 4 meter, 2 meter but what we're interested in around here primarily is 2 meter and 70 centimeters, I have 70 centimeter check, see that? <coughs> and then you can roll it, I'm going to take it off that, I'm going to go to 2 meter which is super duper popular and I don't care about Yesu Fusion yet. 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 <laughs> and then we'll go maximum distance. This maximum distance here, I was doing something intentionally that said 100 miles. And you don't want to do that. You want to start out at like 10. And the reason I say 10 is so that you can figure out what repeater is close enough to you that you can actually get into. Okay? And so, and then when you go back, the thing will come up with a bunch of uh, a bunch of repeaters. So there's two meter. I pushed the one button. I must have pushed a billion lines. 
So I'll kill you a whole bunch of repeaters. The GPS knows where you're at. The GPS knows where you're at. And they'll come up with a bunch of repeaters and they'll tell you at the top of the list it's going to be mount. It's going to be our repeater. It's going to be in three other mount backer repeaters. At least. And you put those in your HTs and keep the push the button down. As long as no one else is talking, just push the button down and throw your call out there. In that case, I just push the button and say N6 VLF. And then people will boo and, and keep talking. <laughs> so, yeah. so and in your case, they'll hear your call and so an R repeater, typically somebody will come back and say, Hey, I hear you. And we'll chat with you and, you, and then we'll do the same thing we always do. Talk about nothing forever. Right. So, also some repeater repeater book is a good too. thing. In the 805. If you want to get a little repeater directory, you can, but it's free or online. So. so do you folks have any particular questions that you'd like to ask us? I want to put like, what's the protocol for using the repeater? The protocol is really simple. <coughs> yeah. There's only two people on the planet that care about your, your call sum. Okay. You and the FCC. FCC. Yeah. Okay? We use what's called plain English. We just talk normal. So you get on the repeater, and in this case, if I wanted to talk to Bruce, I would just get on there and it's Bruce. I'd say, no one's talking, it's just, oh, I say N6THN, N6VLF. And he would answer. If he's listening, he would answer. Oh, go ahead. Another example that is completely legal, but there are some people that frown on it. You can, I do it all the time because I'm a really bad ham radio operator. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get on there, and if you're on the on a on a repeater, and you know that your friend Bruce is still in his garage, you know, working on his hot rod, his HT's laying next to him, you get on the radio and you go, "Hey, Bruce, are you still there?" And he goes, "Yeah, go ahead. It's six THN here." So he IDs, so he doesn't have to ID for ten more minutes. Me. Okay. I have to, because I said, hey, Bruce, are you there? He answered, he id I have to ID within that 10-minute period. Okay. I have to ID before the 10 minutes. Most people don't do that. Most people ID, and then if you hear people on there IDing after every sentence and everything, that's way too much. Okay. You know? So if you're 9.9 .9 minutes, if you're 10, <laughs> 10 minutes and one second. How often does the repeater ID? There you go. I was going to say the repeater IDs, you'll hear it in Morse code every 10 minutes. Yep. So the, the repeater IDs, usually everybody goes ahead and gives their ID. It's just kind of a little reminder for them. Yep. Okay. But when the repeater is awake, not necessarily consistent at The reason of that is because the controller is listening to you guys talk. So if there's a, if there's a, if it's decoded something that's like real, you're talking, it typically won't ID over the top. You know, every once in a while you, you kind of ID and you kind of collide. Yeah. It tries not to do that. It doesn't always. I, I, truthfully, I don't pay attention to it. I, I just try to ID whenever Bruce tells me. That's, that's the easiest way. <laughs> so do you have to know who you're calling? Do you have to know their ID number too? Um, no. Okay. Because, now, it's a good idea to know who you're calling. Their, their call. It is a very good idea. So if I want to call my friend Bob, K6HEW, okay, he's driving around in his car, and he's got like 47 radios turned on, right? <laughs> and he's listening to it, everything from, from county to uh, fire to uh, OES, and he's driving, right? And he's got his ham radio on. And I say, hey, Bob, you out there? He's probably not going to answer me, because which radio was it, and who Bob am I calling? But if I say... Hey, K6HEW, Big Bob, are you out there? And he did he go, oh, that's me. Yeah, go ahead. I'll get his attention with his call. Because after a while, your call is just gonna be in the back of your mind and you're gonna you're gonna know it. You know, and you're gonna just you're gonna wake up. Stay in your sleep. Yeah, it'll 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 be so easy. It's super easy, guys. It's it's just be kind, be courteous, use plain language. And all we do is we try to steer away from topics that could, could be off-putting, like serious politics, um, uh, yeah. inappropriate sexual innuendos, things like that. Women. Uh, yeah, we don't. We don't. Yeah, we don't degrade <laughs> men or women on on it. And we and you'll occasionally, occasionally, you'll hear somebody astray from that. And if the control operator is is 
listening, they'll say something like, hey guys, can you please just tone it down a little bit? Let's just bring it back to ham radio or, you know, hot ride in your car. Because if you want to talk about your Jeeps, where you went in your Jeeps, how am I going to put my radio on my Jeeps? How my wife or my girlfriend hates the radio on my Jeep? Uh, 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 how I want to put a 47 foot tower in my backyard so I can talk to you, my friends, in their Jeeps? All of that is, is fine. I would say that the majority of what you want to talk about is fine. If, you, if it's inappropriate to talk about being you know, in front of your wife or your mother, don't do it on the radio. Or your grandmother. Or your grandmother. Yeah. Same to the grandmother. Yeah, don't do it on the grandma. Maybe the 60 foot so tower. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. It's really easy. And as far as repeater protocol um, um, is, um, take a breath between your your, your symptoms. <coughs> Give it. Some of some of us are quick hears. You'll hear somebody go, "Yeah, Kevin, uh, I did this, I did that, did it, did it." And let's go. And I go, "Yeah." And it's like there's there's no time for somebody <coughs> to just quickly throw their idea out. Normally, you just throw your call out. Some people will say, "Break." I just sometimes I'll literally, go, "Hey," <laughs> literally, because. I'm not, I usually don't use break. I don't use break, break. Because if you say break, break, that means there's something bad happening. So don't do that. Um, but you can say break. You can say hello or info. Info is another great one. It's short, sweet, info. So if someone's talking about something you're interested in, and you don't know who they are, just wait for the break and go info. And they'll Be careful using break, break. I said not to do that. That's what he said. So don't do what it. He said. I don't hear so well. Because this guy here and that guy there will arrest you. Anyways, radio arrest. You know, it's really weird, but it happens. So if you uh, uh, just say info, and, and then they go, oh, go ahead, info. You just throw your call out there and you say, yeah, you know, this is my call. N6 BC, N6 VLF. My name's Kevin. You guys were talking about you know these new cool fusion radios. I don't have one. Can I ask you a question? You're in. It's that easy. So, but when you're out on your four-wheel drive club, and you guys are out out in the boonies somewhere doing something with somebody, you're probably going to be on simplex, right? Radio to radio, because you're probably on the side of the mountain, and you probably have somewhere between line of sight and almost line of sight. You might not see them from the trees, but the VHF will go quite a ways through the trees and stuff. It doesn't go through rock mountains, but you'll be on a simplex frequency. You know, you might be a little less formal, you know, just remember to ID, you know, in case there's a, a radio cop listening. We have a, there's a few of those out there, but for the most part, it's left up to you. It's the honor system, ID every 10 minutes. And if you're out there and you happen to know somebody um, who owns a repeater on a mountaintop, and you're from out of the area, and you're going to have a club event, it's, it's a nice thing to do to call the guy, you know, uh, if you like, say Eric it, uh, owns a, some ha operates repeaters or something, and uh, uh, so does John. Let me tell you, John. Anyways, let's just say you knew that you were going there. You knew about the repeater. You could call them up. Say, hey, we're going to have like ten guys in our area with jeeps. Is it okay if we get on your repeater and use it this Saturday from this time to this time? <coughs> okay. And they'll say yes or no. If they say yes, now you've got a club event on that repeater that the, the, that the club said it was okay to do. Just like when we do Merriman on Main, uh, Mr. Bob will set up uh, a net control and they'll announce it, okay, where is the net control for this? And we just, so everybody in the area kind of knows that hey, these guys are doing something nice for the, for the community. Let's not get on the repeater and, and talk about you know, rotating our tires when there's someone trying to uh, call in a, a lost child <coughs> so we can report it to security to help the family. But that's a, one example. The other example is uh, the uh, you go out and you just ask permission to you tie up the repeater all day with 10 people. Otherwise, just use it. Or, that's about it. You guys got any more questions?